next on the Broadway show, The Piper Pays Him. The Music Man comes back to Broadway. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's your first look at Hugh Jackman returning to the great bright way. Plus, Six Reign Supreme will chat with one of the stars of the pop concert musical, Brittany Mack. And the name on everybody's lips is going to be Anna. We're talking to Anna via Fanye about taking on the role of Roxy Hart in Chicago. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. Each and every week, we are pumped up because Broadway is back, and I'm so glad you could be here for The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. First up, The Music Man is now in previews on Broadway. This is the moment Hugh Jackman returned to Broadway in the role of Harold Hill. Gentlemen, you intrigue me. After delivering just one line, 45 seconds of roaring applause before he could continue. Of course, a lot of people might think of Hugh Jackman as an action star, Wolverine from X-Men. But he's also known for his fancy footwork on the stage. He stars alongside fellow Tony winner Sutton Foster. The Music Man is a story of what happens when con man Harold Hill arrives in River City, only to fall in love with a town librarian. The revival's official opening night is in February. Listen up, let me tell you a story. Welcome to the show, to the history. The Queens of Six have claimed their thrones, continuing to reign supreme over Broadway. It's a show that's got all the energy of a pop concert not to be missed. Paul Wontorek sat down with one of the stars of Six, Brittany Mack. Thanks, Tamsin. We chatted about the show's passionate fan base, the Queendom, and so much more. Get down. Get down, you dirty rascal. What about this show? What is the secret of the sauce? Why does this just magic? I think there's a combination of magic pieces. Toby and Lucy are telling a story that has to do with their history, right? They are from London and, you know, they went to school. So, so them creating this was for school. Right. Their friendship is kind of leaps off the pages, so to speak. You can see and smell and taste the collaboration when you're like, just reading the score in the script. In the room in Chicago, I will never forget, we sat down uh, the very first day. We sat there and I was like, uh, I said, okay ladies, I just, uh, I wanna take a second and just clear the air that this is a room full of all women. So I think if we respect each other as black, white, mixed, Filipino, whatever your generations may be, that we're humans first, then we're women, and then we're these creative beings. And I think as long as we keep that going, we can have something very special. We agreed that day, and from that day on, I think that's the magic in our sauce. It's respect first, and then, you know, I don't know what they did with that casting. I don't know how they did it. One of a kind, no Casting and the music. I mean, we're we're in rehearsals wilding out over everybody. Adriana sang and we were like, what the? F you know what I mean? Like we were just freaking out and just like gassing each other up, gassing yeah. each other up. Cause that's what women need. We need to be gassed mm -hmm. constantly. Um, and that's what artists need. So to give each other exactly what we need is just enough to get through the show. And that, from there just kind of evolved into respect and honor and then just like genuine love because yeah. Abby Mueller cracks my world up. She makes me laugh so hard every day, all the time. And you know, I try to be a professional and I, and I, I, I can't with her around. So it, it's, it's respect first. It's a lot of fun to watch Six and Musical, but how much fun is it to be up there with those women doing it? It's, is bananas. It's so dope. It's so dope. It's so, so dope. cool. Like, I, if I'm dancing, No Way is my favorite song to dance in the show. And baby, you cannot tell me that I am not dancing for Janet Jackson, okay? <laughs> I am giving you Rhythm Nation. Like, I, I am serving you everything you could possibly need in life. 
you're welcome. Like, that's how I feel. That's my swag, you know? And, you know, then watching Abby just stand and sing. I'm just like, <laughs> You can build me up. You can tear me down. You can try, but I'm unbreakable. It, it, it's incredible. It's incredible. And I get to be a part of it every night. It's, it's an honor. The fan base has not gone anywhere. Oh They're very excited. They have their tickets. That must feel good. It must feel good to know that that energy, there was such an energy for the yeah. show, and it's still there. It, it, it does. It's, it's humbling. It's humbling um, because we are all very just kind of normal chicks. We call our fans the queendom. They're crazy. They are crazy. They're crazy. They're always like, hey, Auntie Brittany. It's a good time. They, they keep us um, they keep us on our toes, you know, they keep us aware, um, they keep us accountable. So the, the discussions that we're having now as a cast um, with producers and, and with other cast on, on, on equality um, and equity, which are two different things, um, in the workplace and on Broadway is for them, right? It's because they're all aspiring. So, so we gotta get it right. What made you want to do this first when you were first a kid, when you were that kid in high school? Why did you want to express yourself this way? Oh my gosh. Well, okay, so what had happened was, right? So, growing up in Chicago, um, WTTW, uh, Channel 11, used to play musicals really, really late on Sunday nights. Okay. My mom sat me down in front of a TV uh, one night and was like, don't move. And I didn't move. You know, I, I grew up watching musicals. I grew up watching it all happen at the same time, right? Singing, dance, and acting. So it wasn't, I, I can't even say I'm the person that's like, oh, I'm a dancer, first, singer, second, and subpar. Um, like, I just do all of it to whatever level I can do it at that day, because the knees, my God. And so the influences of uh, Gary Coleman and Shirley Temple, I told my mom, I said, I want to be Gary Coleman and Shirley Temple when I grow up. <laughs> she was like, Okay. And then, and that was it. And I was like, and she said, I can't remember, I can't believe you remember that conversation. I was like, I'll never forget it because she never told me I couldn't. She is strong, though her body is weak. She is wise, though she can't find the answers we seek. Okay, so this is special. Broadway star Brian Darcy James and composer Tom Kitt have teamed up for a new music video to honor the late Rebecca Luker. Luker passed away one year ago after a long battle with ALS. The video, She Has Hope, produced with Project ALS, features never-before-seen footage of Luker at home with her husband, Danny Bernstein. You can watch the full video and learn more about Project ALS at Broadway.com. Anna Viafanye is Roxy Hart in Broadway's longest-running musical revival, Chicago. Let's check in with Charlie Cooper. Thanks, Samson. Anna Viafanye will be the name on everybody's lips as she plays the iconic Roxy Hart in Chicago. We met up right outside of the Ambassador Theater. And all that jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz. So Anna, you'll be playing the iconic role of Roxy in Chicago right here at the Ambassador Theater. What does that feel like? Well, that was a very hardcore reminder right now because I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna have a real audience. It feels like a massive responsibility and ranking just passed away in December. So it's kind of like being the first one to play this role after her passing and also post pandemic is just like monumental to me. So I keep that very sacred. And then it's also fun. It's also like such a female empowerment show. It's such a sexy show, but it has so much depth and it's, uh, I'm just discovering something every day. So it's, it's been thrilling. Sit on your feet. Get up and make it happen. You're known for playing these iconic roles. Of course, Gloria Stefan. And on your feet, of Casual. course. Casually, Casual. Casual. right? Yes. Did that role prepare you at all for this one? Yes. In and what I've ways? been thinking about it a lot. It, it prepared me because you step into something that everybody knows and loves, right? Gloria, people were coming into the, into the theater and have a point of reference. So there kind of was a getting it wrong. And so I was very um, 
uh, hard on myself, but in the best way to like be professional, show up every day, have the integrity, ask the questions, have the courage to ask the questions. And in this case, we didn't have the luxury of time. I didn't have, you know, months with the company. I didn't have months with the director and with, you know, Gloria. It was kind of more creating it from a new place and from a refreshing place and my point of view but it's something that's already iconic and that legends have played this role. So it's kind of also for me as an artist and as a woman of color, it's very like, I can show people that I can just be a leading lady and it doesn't have to be Cuban and it doesn't have to be Hispanic or it doesn't have to, so, it, so it's very liberating. Um, and thankfully the, the team has been incredibly generous and compassionate with me and just letting me find that for myself. Even though it's been fast and dirty, but letting me find it for myself within the time constraints. Have you found that um, people have found it hard to see you outside of that role? Totally. I mean, my I just got chills, and that happened in 2015. But my Broadway debut was a fairy tale situation. I had auditioned from in LA. I actually, when they flew me out here to audition, that is the hotel I stayed in, which overlooked the Chicago Theater. So full this is very moment. full circle. Mm. It was a very big gift. I mean, I had to step up, but it was. Uh, I know that that doesn't happen. You don't book your first Broadway audition and lead a show that was a hit. That doesn't happen. Have any of the other Roxy's given you any sort of gems or advice? I know Bianca's in the show playing someone completely different, but I she's know. been a, a Roxy in the revival before. Yes, so Bianca Marroquin, who's a queen, uh, and who, who's, I can't believe that I get to play alongside her because I met her when I first moved here for On Your Feet. She introduced me at a concert, and that was years ago, and now we're side by side on stage, but at the time she was playing Roxy. So she's a beast, and she's up there, you know, relearning the show from the other side of the stage, which has been like a mental Rubik's Cube for her. Yeah. Uh, and, it's, and it's hilarious, we laugh about it backstage, and, and she's been really, really kind and very, like, helpful in terms of just saying, like, oh, like, over a little bit or whatever, <laughs> like little little tips and tricks type things. We also have Angel Rita in the show who has understudied Roxy for many, many years and she just came back from having her first child. The other day we were doing Funny Honey for the first time and I'm on a ladder. I didn't know there was a ladder involved Crazy. in this show. So I'm like eight feet in the air and do, trying to sing this ballad like if I'm like completely controlled and she's like, here's a tip, use your heel to latch onto the ladder and then you won't fall. There's still a whole lot more to talk about on this edition of The Broadway Show. Coming up, it's not easy being green, Lindsay Pierce's Elphaba in Wicked. We're talking about her return to Oz. The Broadway Show is back in just a sec. We've said it before, you can't keep a good witch down. Broadway returned to Oz this fall at the Gershwin Theater. Paul Wontora caught up with the Broadway star who plays Alphaba, Lindsay Pierce. Lindsay Pierce has flown back to Oz as Wicked's resident green girl. I met up with Broadway's Alphaba at Gallo Green, naturally, to talk about returning to the show post-pandemic and so much more. You have an interesting story yeah. because I feel like this was a dream role for you. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got on stage. Mm -hmm. You got to actually start doing it, and then the show just Sayonara. went away. Yeah. My my debut date was the 25th of February, and then by the what the 12th of March, something like that. It was. We all got texts, and we were like, I guess we're not going to work. Did it almost feel like a dream? Like, did, did you feel like, yeah. like, did I actually do that? Yeah. Was I in Wicked? Yeah, our stage manager, the amazing Mary Beth Abel, called and she was like, one day you're going to do this, kid. <laughs> she was like, you're going to get in there and you're going to do it. And I was like, it's fine, you know. We had no idea what it was going to be. We yeah. had no idea what was happening. And yeah. It was really surreal. It was yeah. really, really surreal. And then, you know, everybody kind of like mass exodus out of the city and yeah. Tell me about this role. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a challenging role. Mm -hmm. This is a dream role for many young actresses. Yes. What was it like actually doing it? And what does it mean this time to be doing it again? And is it is it different for you? I feel like I've been singing this uh, music since I was like 12, like uh -huh. in the backseat of like a sedan, <laughs> just like <laughs> screaming at the top of my lungs. And to, to go from that and like singing it elsewhere throughout my career and just 
as like, this is the song. If I really want to show off my chops, I'll sing, you know, The Wizard and I or yeah. De Defying Gravity. Um, it's very different to do it eight times a week because it's not just the songs, it's the scenes and it's the content and the emotional roller coaster that you go through. And she's intense, she's bombastic, and she's, you know, she wears everything right on her sleeves, on those gorgeous shoulder pads from the second eye, those gorgeous, like, tufty sleeves. So to gauge energy, having never, I'd never done a full production of anything in New York, I'd never been on, in a Broadway schedule, and it is not to be believed. It's nothing to scoff at. These people are Olympians. It's wild. Our ensemble, I bow down. What they put their bodies through, what everybody puts their body through to make this show possible is nothing short of miraculous. And um, I'll tell you what, after my debut, I woke up the next day and I was like, oh my God, I've been, I just got hit by a truck. And I, and I thought to myself, I have to do this again right. and again right. and again. Now coming back, I feel a little more mentally prepared for it. I don't think I'm gonna waste a moment. I feel like you can get really wrapped up in your experience of something and be like, it's really hard or I'm really sad today or I'm tired today. Whereas instead of seeing it as a drawback, I want to see things as an opportunity. So tell me, what is it actually like to be painted green and to fly, let's not reveal the secret, to fly at the mm -hmm. end of Act One and to sing Defying Gravity and hit those notes. What is that actually like? It's for surreal. the audience, it's intense. It's so I really can imagine surreal. what it's like for you. One, to sit. You know, people don't realize, one, how long it takes. And then it's not as long as some people think it takes to get green but also not as quick as some other people think. Right. It's about 30, 40 minutes, depending yeah. on the day. And you don't move. You sit there and you get green. And so you're kind of in this meditative, yeah. almost like spa state yeah. where you're just uh -huh. like, mm, Elphaba, <laughs> and like just trying to like conjure her in. It's exhilarating. I mean, I'll never forget running out from the clock doors my first time and hearing the response of the audience. And um, I'm very afraid of heights, but I'll tell you what, I'm like, well, remains to be seen because I haven't flown again since the last time I did it. Um, so I could be screaming at the top of my lungs, but there's something really amazing, to, especially in the Gershwin. There's something really amazing about walking the same boards that Adina and Julia Murney, you yeah. know, like the great Stephanie J. Block, yeah. like these these Titan females that have walked these, these boards, yeah. that have been in those boots, that have been in that levitator. You know, it's like all, it's amazing. It's really incredible and, um, They've all gone through it and there's this incredible green sisterhood of women that are just like, I know. <laughs> I know what role you're playing. I see the green hairline. Um, <laughs> you're never alone. Another wish has been granted. Disney's Aladdin is now reopened on Broadway and it features a rising star in the title role. And he has this week's fresh face. My name is Michael Maliakel, and I'm playing Aladdin on Broadway. It feels surreal for so many reasons. It's my Broadway debut, and then the added layer of, of being representative of, of the South Asian community in the theater world. Everything about it is, is incredible. Aladdin was, uh, was every brown kid's prince growing up. Um, he was it. He was it, and he was it, meaning there wasn't much else. <laughs> in uh, mainstream media for uh, young brown kids to look up to and aspire to and see themselves represented as. There's so many things about the original film. My brothers and I absolutely annihilated that VHS. It must be in shreds somewhere in my parents' house. Over the years, especially as I started singing, every like family gathering, even like a karaoke, it's like go sing a whole new world. And now to be like on a Broadway stage getting paid to sing a whole new world, I like, get goosebumps thinking about that. I grew up in central New Jersey, in Hamilton. My first love was really music. I consider myself a musician at heart. Theater sort of came into my life a little bit later. In high school, I did a couple of shows. It was Sky Masterson and Guys and Dolls. I think it was probably the first time that I like really was like, this is fun. And I, I think I could see myself doing this for, for the future. I get asked a lot, like, was this your dream growing up? Was this like a lifelong dream that you're realizing, um, debuting on Broadway? And the honest answer is no. It wasn't a dream that I allowed myself to have. It's hard to dream something that you can't see, especially as a young kid, if you don't have something in front of you to light that path. 
In so many ways, this role and this opportunity feel a lot bigger than me. My hope is that being on stage at the New Amsterdam, that young kids will, will show up and, and have the fuel to dream big and, and know that these opportunities are there for them, that they deserve to take up these spaces. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.